Today has been a red letter day as far as our vaccination rollout program is being concerned. And in fact, there are two records that have been set which are noteworthy. And for this, I want to commend all the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis who have made a special effort to encourage and who themselves have gone out to be vaccinated. Today, we have had the largest number of doses of vaccine administered for the year so far since we have started our vaccination rollout. I'm advised that today we administered 1,062 doses. This is again the largest number of doses that has been administered since we have started the rollout of the program. And I want to say that this effort was a collective effort across the Twin Islands of St. Kitts and Nevis, and all 17 health centers participated in this exercise. The records would reveal that at St. Peter's, we had 67 persons taking their first shot. At Molyneux, 35. Bastia, 94. Newtown, 157. St. Paul's, 10. Sandy Point, 13. Old Road, 26. Tabernacle, 10. Kayon, 48. Deep Bay, 8. Sadler's, 10. Charlestown, 144. Brown Hill, 53. Combermere, 21. And at Cajola, 29 persons were vaccinated, making a total of 725 first-timers, as it were, being vaccinated today. Those receiving second doses, total 337 for a total of 1,062. This then is an excellent performance and in fact should give all of us who are taking part in this battle against COVID-19 inspiration that all is not lost. And the second most important detail is that today we have crossed the half mark in that now we have more than 50% of the target population vaccinated. Indeed, the arithmetic would reveal that 51.6% of the target population have now been vaccinated. That is, have had their first dose. So this is an excellent performance by international standards. We have gone further afield than many over the limited period in which we have started this program. We should all feel a sense of pride in these achievements um, so far. And even as we look at the numbers that are now fully vaccinated, we are just about 20%. Again, this going is far better than those fully vaccinated in the EU and far better, I'm advised, than what is happening in Canada, just to give some comparatives. So St. Kitts and Nevis still presses on, still continue to be an example of how we manage a major pandemic. Today we have had a vote of confidence, in my view, by the majority in the excellent work that the government is doing in the battle against the pandemic. And so for me, it is words of congratulations to the health team and the broader task force and beyond them, the all of society team that have been working very hard really to defeat the pandemic, to get our country back to work again, to bring back more jobs, better incomes, better opportunities for all our people. I want to believe that our tomorrow will be better than our today. Better in terms of our commitment to the right thing for ourselves, for our communities, for our country. Clearly the events over the last couple of days indicated what we all should have known, that COVID-19 will not respect us. 
It will not wait until we are ready to be vaccinated to attack us. It will not wait and to determine whether we are young or we are old, whether we are living in rural parts, suburban areas, or rural parts of St. Kitts and Nevis. There's a fierce urgency of now for all of us who are responsible to do what we must, to do the right thing, to come forward and be vaccinated. We are still so fortunate that while around the world there is a global shortage of vaccines, here we still have vaccines to be administered. That situation will not last forever. Therefore, I want to encourage all to move forward and become vaccinated. I am particularly delighted to have with us a panel of some of the best uh, public servants that we have in this country to commend them for coming on board tonight to further um, educate, elucidate, and encourage others with respect to this battle in which we are engaged. It is not yet over, but we are making progress, steady progress, and we want to continue in that part. I want to commend an educator in whom I have utmost confidence, Permanent Secretary in Education, Mr. Vincent Hodge and to thank him for being here and thank him for returning home from yonder lands to be of further service to the country. I want equally to thank Dr. Cameron Wilkinson, who has been part of the, the health team of experts that have given your man service to the country. It will take a long list and too much time to enumerate the many areas in which he has put aside himself and his family to be of wider and greater service to this country that he clearly loves. Equally, I want to thank our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Hazel Laws, for being here. Like Dr. Cameron, she too has been in this battle and have left no stone unturned in an effort to ensure that we have the opportunity to return to normalcy at the soonest possible time. To all three, I say thank you. And to all your family members, friends, and well-wishers who have given you support, I want to say to them, thank you too, for by supporting you, they have supported the success of our country.